Hi there, I'm Joshua Finn from j and Aerospace. A lot of you are familiar with the Evo fire kit that we produce. Uh, however, this video covers not only that airplane, but the new Evo E, which is our F5K design, the electric uh, version of our discus launch glider. It also covers the previous Evo Woody kits from Tran Morisano, because this is a comprehensive build for the wing that's the same for all of those aircraft. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you in short form as opposed to the longer form that Tran has how I personally produce these wings. It's a little bit different from what Tran uses so I would ask that you consider reading through the thread on RC groups, sampling some of his videos, and compare before you make a, a complete call on oh I'm going to go one way or the other. But this is my method I have built um, I built five of these, five, four of these wings myself, participated in a fifth one, um, and I built several other aircraft using these same methods, um, because we have another aircraft now that uses similar wing construction. So the first thing that you need to do when you get, when, when you're going to get set up is you need to have a, a nice large building board surface, you know, like this one for example. Um, and then you need to lay out on there your wings. So this is the wing file that we provide in the kits and you can go at it as you will. Um, this is kind of a universal thing. Tran was using this for some other stuff so you need to look for your mirrored edges on the wings. You may want to choose to cut this up a little bit. I'm actually going to curl it over the table a little. So I'm going to use these two right here. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to center it up on the board. And here's why. I like to face the wing from its trailing edge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this one, then I'll spin the board around and work on that one over there. So how do we use all of this? Well, we're going to take straight pins, first of all, and we're going to pin the plan down here. And that's just to keep it sitting still um, we have, we're going to pin the frames down and that's where the real stability is going to come from. And then you're going to take these sheets for now that have your lower surface, your uh, jig ribs set those out here for a second and then I'll we'll pull out this set of wide strips here and what you want to do is break those out um, honey can I get a razor blade please so I'm going to pop these out One of the things that I will mention is this has undergone several revisions under Tran and I have not modified the parts for these in any way, shape, or form. So as a result of that, uh, there are some parts in here that I don't even use. So like these pieces down here, I actually don't use those. That's my personal technique. Take it for what it's worth. Uh, you do want these to be flat, so remove all the uh, laser tabbing from them. They do not have to be perfect in any other way though, um, because this is just to provide you a straight surface for the trailing edge of your wing. Um, these frames build in all of your, um, all of your washout and everything. So what you're going to do is set this guy down over one of these frames, just like that. All there is to it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pin this in place, just to get myself started.
Now these ribs are labeled by their station with this um, this jig sheet does not show the numbering. So bear that in mind as you're doing this. Number one has a little engraved vertical line right here and you'll find that it matches up right here with this wing root. You'll also notice that it comes short of what's shown out here. Don't even worry about that. That's not important. And you can take that from, from me because these are the exact parts I've used to build um, like I said, five of these. This will be the sixth one of these I've built, so take that for what it's worth. Probably not very much that it's worth. Now, as you're putting straight pins in here, it is very important that you make sure that the pin heads end up below the surface of the structure because otherwise they will interfere with building your wing. One B right here is a piece that goes right there. And so that gives, and, and you'll understand when we start building this why that's there. Okay, um, I'm going to glue all of these in here um, and then we'll come back. Uh, one thing I will mention, the numbers on the ribs go to the leading edge. So like number 16 for example, pop number 16 out. Number 16 is a small little piece. The number is on this side so that goes forward and I glue it in right out here. and go on from there. So, like I said, I'll come back once we have um, both of these built out and then you can see how they're set up. All right, as you can see, we have these frames laid out. This one has a bunch of stuff on top of it because we're about to show you how to use that stuff. So you have four wing panels here, wing skins. It's very important that you look at what these skins are. So you'll have one set that has nothing on either side and that have this bay right here open. You'll have this other set that have that bay closed and they have engraving on one side of them. These are your bottom skins. You want to lay them on these forms with the engraved side up. So you've got this one that you'll put here got the other one that you'll set on this one and it is very important as you're doing this again that you just set these guys down here like so um, the, the engraving needs to be up because that's going to provide you with alignment guides for all of the parts that go into this airplane now 
Trayan, in his instructions, says to put double side tape down over these forms. That is not a bad idea. In fact, it is a very good idea. It just happens that I don't do that. Um, and that's my personal style of building this airplane. So you need to think about how are you personally going to choose to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a couple of straight pins in here. And I'm going to use those to back this uh, wing skin up against this form and hold it in place. Place. place a straight pin here at the root. Out here at the tip. And then just a couple in here. Hold things in place. Doesn't take but one or two. There we go. The wing is now loosely pinned down, um, and actually, for me, the way I build it, I don't need any further security than that to hold this wing in place. Now that the wing is pinned down, look, find this sheet of heavy 3 16th inch balsa, and it will be labeled flaps, leading edge, wing trailing edge. Break out one of the wing trailing edge bits in here. And once it is popped out of here, uh, on one side there will be only one laser tab here at the center. Use that as the bottom because you don't have to worry about it for the top. And just lay this temporarily in place here. We're not going to glue it down yet. Go over here to these wing uh, root ribs that are also 3 16 sheet and pop out the continuous rib for anything else. Make sure it's the one that pertains to the wing panel you're working on. And I just broke it loose. Dang it. The point was to avoid that. Let me glue this little guy back together. try to avoid being an idiot like me. And that rib is going to go over here like so. Line up the back of the slot right here. This thing has two slots in it. Line the back up with a little mark that goes down the trailing edge of the wing here. And so we're going to glue this in at the wing root. And this is your first opportunity to see how I personally uh, maintain the airfoil shape of this wing without um, actually using the double stick tape. So we're just going to glue that guy in and if you press it down you will get the proper curvature because you're pressing it into the bed that you have made for this wing. Now that this is in place, go ahead and we're going to assemble the rest of this root rib. And pay attention to what's up and down on this component. I'm not super worried about the uh, laser tabs here because we're going to sand the top of this uh, the rib structure before we assemble this wing anyway. The main thing is to maintain the orientation of all of those pieces. So I'm going to just work my way front to back 
And if you're worried, I can't see everything that you're showing here on our website. There is a pictorial guide showing this assembly process. There are marks that show the outlines of where each of these parts are supposed to go. This one in the middle has a little slot. That's where your wires will go through and then exit out the top of the wing for uh, your wiring harnesses. Then you've got this next piece. It's going to go in here. Um, another hard point area in the wing. This rib does not actually go up against that root. It forms a closure around the root area of the flap. So there'll be a little gap right there. Now that we've installed all of that, we can come in here and we can put our wing tip in place. Um, the spars as they are, if you place them at the tip, they don't come all the way to the root, that's okay. Have this, this trailing edge spar, web, whatever you want to call it, have it go all the way to the tip. That's your primary importance. So we're going to run glue the full length of this guy. And I'm going to install it from the tip inboard, lining it up flush with the trailing edge of this wing skin. It is important that you line this up correctly because this is going to form your datum line from which all of the remainder of your ribs are installed. So now that's in place and now from here you can probably figure everything else out. You lay ribs in, after that you'll come in and you'll put your webbing, after that you'll come in and put your leading edge. Very simple from here on. But this, is, this is the most crucial part of your wing. You'll replicate all the same things over there on your, uh, on your, uh, that's your left wing, um, etc. But this is the most crucial part right here. After this, everything lines up beautifully on its own. Now that you have the uh, this rear web trailing edge, whatever you want to call it, installed, now you can start installing ribs. And the ribs are located on this sheet, so all the ribs are out here, plus your shear webs. Start with your number two rib and just work your way along. All the ribs are on this sheet, every last one of them, so you don't have to go looking anywhere else. They're all here. Uh, the one thing I will mention is right here you'll have these tiny little ribs that are not labeled. Those are your tip ribs. So they go way out here at the tips. And I'll just show you, again, I'm not using the double stick tape. Uh, Tran does. Uh, it's your choice as to whether or not you do so. But I'm going to show you my method and you can make your own decisions. Um, but I, I will mention this is the sixth one of these wings that I have assembled using some, well, that I've ta taken part in building using this method. Um, center the rib over the line that pertains to it. Press it down. And then on an as-needed base, basis, you can hit that with CA accelerator. Um, make sure that the front assumes the proper curvature. Mine is wanting to pop up a little bit. And 
now you can just work your way on down. You'll note that some of these ribs have a little hole in them. That's for the wiring for your uh, ailerons, flapperon servos. Uh, should you choose to run lights down your wing, um, you'll have to drill additional holes. I should mention, I said something wrong here. I said that these ribs need to be centered on those lines. That is not correct. The ribs go on the outboard side of the lines. So that one I messed up and then I'll, I'll have to trim the webbing there. Um, it is not a big deal, uh, but if you do it correctly, everything just lines up better. Um, and this skin is designed to um, provide cap stripping over those ribs. So if you center them correctly, they just do that much better. As you can tell, I am using medium CA here. You could use thin CA. Again, this is up to your personal choice. Look at what you're comfortable using and go from there. Um, I am using Gorilla. Uh, medium super glue. It's a it's base. It's basically rebranded mercury medium CA, um, which I highly recommend. Um, Bob Smith medium CA. I'm a little leery of because it hardens much quicker. Um, I prefer to have the CA have a little bit of delay to its hardening because I can always come back and hit it with kicker as opposed to the Bob Smith brand. I have a lot of problems with it kicking um, while I'm still maneuvering the part into place. And I mean, literally as soon as it makes contact with the surface, it starts hardening and then you can't get your part all the way in. We'll come back once the rest of these are in because you've seen what's involved. So all of these ribs are in place. I want to catch the other wing up to where we are right now. So the way to do that is I'll simply turn my building board around. And now, since I roughly centered whole assembly on here, I'm able to easily get to everything uh, from, from the back here. So this is why we arrange things in the way that we have. Okay, so the previous section step I was uh, intending to show you, but uh, the sound did not come through. However, what I can tell you is this. We have added the webbing um, on all of this uh, wing. Uh, those are the vertical grain pieces that are in your rib part sheets. The only thing that is really important to remember is that right here at the wing roots, there are three of these webs, and the front two go over the lines on the webbing to line up with a slot that is marked off on this root rib. And the front of this uh, um, rib doubler at the root uh, provides a wall for that webbing to go against. So you need to carefully provide, um, and one way you can do is take 1 uh, strips and stick them in there, um, a, a barrier so that you get those two webs 1 16th of an inch apart. This forms a slot that you'll be able to slide your wing joiner into. Um, that part of the root rib will eventually be carved out uh, and we'll show how to do that uh, at a later time. But the bottom line is that is a, uh, a core element there. Uh, that is the structural center of this wing is that wing joiner. 
Um, now, the way that we join up the wings, ultimately that part technically is not even necessary, but I still recommend putting it in. Um, even though the fiberglass essentially deletes the importance of that component, my personal opinion is that it provides a little bit of compression and buckling resistance all the way out to the first rib. From there, all of your webs go on the front side, the forward side, of the score line that is marked along all of this. The, the shear webs are cut oversized, so you will need to sh uh, cut them to length for each of those rib bays. Now the last, uh, I think this is number 14, um, it usually comes out exactly the right length. Then there's another uh, piece of webbing that goes out in the tip, which technically is not necessary and will tend to get in your way when you put a throwing blade in. Um, but I still put it in anyway and then just carve out as much of it as I need to after the wing is assembled. And we'll show how to, how to deal with that. Um, there is a rear shear web that goes at the back of your servo pocket. And then uh, there's also a, an additional shear web that goes here in the wing root just to provide some additional strength and, and buckling resistance in this area because there's a lot of stress that's imposed here, particularly um, on the outside wing. So this, if I'm right-handed, I'm throwing from the left wing. This wing has enough dihedral that it wants to buckle up like that. And so you want to have a lot of strength at that wing root. Further out does not matter as much. Um, I think that pretty well covers everything in here. Like I said, forward of that line, make sure you've got your 1 16th inch wide slot here at the wing root so that you can slide your wing joiner in and you're good to go there. Uh, both of these wings have had this treatment, so the webs are all in place. So now we're going to proceed on to installing a leading edge in this wing. So you have this strip here of these um, roughly uh, 3 16th inch wide strips. And the first thing that you want to do is get one of these. You can get one that's from an edge and remove any uh, laser tabbing from it. So we're going to put this at the bottom. And then go ahead and just break this guy loose like that. And again, making sure we have tabbing eliminated from the bottom there. And so that strip is just going to lay in front of these ribs and you'll work it all the way out here. So I'll show you how to do that. What we're going to do is we are going to run glue on the bottom of this guy and this takes a little while and this is why I recommend using a um, this particular type of glue because it gives you a little bit of working time and then you can hit it with accelerator and it hardens almost instantaneously front of all of your ribs And I'm going to overlap this a little bit because this, this piece is oversized anyway. So we're going to drop this guy down. And you want it flush against the bottom of that wing skin. Or top of it. You know, whatever. Something like that. And we're wanting to make sure that this is flush up against the ribs. That it's vertical and all of that. We're just going to keep working this in all the way out as we approach the tip. Now 
here's where it gets a little interesting is when I start bending this around. What I want to do is still maintain that adhesion at the bottom, and then this last bay, you gotta be real careful as you bend this all the way around back to that rib. And, um, and if you do it right, it won't break. If it does break, just piece it in there. It'll be okay. In this case, I got it in without it breaking, so it looks awesome. And there you are. That is your first lamination. You get to do two more. Okay, so we have this first lamination in. So we're going to come in and we're going to do our second one. Same procedure as before. You want to make sure that your laser tabbing is eliminated. I'm not even going to worry about the one at the root because I'm going to overlap this far enough um, that it doesn't matter. We're not concerned about the top surface of the spar because we're going to be carving into that pretty aggressively. Um, so it just it literally doesn't matter. All right, so that's going to be the bottom of it. Now, for this one, we want to follow a different procedure, and that is we're going to just run glue all the way along here. Um, this will be a little interesting because I've got an accelerator down here. this guy in. and you will see that it sticks up above your first strip and that's because there is an upward curvature of that skin to form your nice tidy leading edge and if you've done this right it literally just lays beautifully in here Now, let's say you got that in there and you've got a bubble in it somewhere or something like that and you're freaking out because I done it wrong or, or something of that nature. Don't worry too much because the bottom line is we're going to do some heavy carving on that leading edge and as a result, it's when you're done, it's not going to look any, the, the landscape of that wing is going to change. Now, if you've got a gap in there, fill it in with some scrap balsa or something and it'll give you a better leading edge because we do want to end up with a nice accurate leading edge but don't freak out too much because the plywood everything's going to get hacked on, sawed on, etc. Um, in, in order to properly form that leading edge so don't, work, don't sweat it too much at this point. The third lamination goes in exactly the same as the second nothing unique there so uh, I'll install that and then we'll come back. I now have all of the leading edge laminations on these wings and we are done gluing for a little while. So there are several things that we need to do um, before we begin sanding our webs and our leading edges down and that's uh, implementing some procedures to ensure that we don't over sand on this wing. So the first thing is that we need to clear out some space at the wing roots. So at this time, go ahead and pop these joiners off of your, uh, of your root ribs. And I would suggest also that since this entire area is stabilized, you may want to go ahead and cut this slot in here for your webbing, or sorry, for your wing joiner. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut into this. I'm going to kick that material out. And so now I have all of that out of the way. 
And so at this point, I want to go get a sanding block because I need to sand this area down before I can put tape in to mitigate over sanding on the rest of the wing. Now I have a sanding block, and at this time I'm going to go ahead and in these areas I'm going to sand down, and I'll have to sand down this trailing edge uh, spar web as well. But I need to pay careful attention that I to the progress here since I've got laser burning here. Um, that's going to provide a guide uh, to know when I've sanded too far or far enough, hopefully. And so at that point, um, I'm not through all of the laser burn here, so that means I've sanded about the right amount. I'll do the same thing right here. And you only want to sand just enough. Now that that's sanded, we'll be able to lay tape over this to limit our um, to limit how far we go down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and I'm not going to lay it up against the trailing edge. I'm going to lay it forward of the trailing edge. And the reason that I want to do that is if you remember, if you look closely, there are still laser tabs on these ribs. We're going to do a similar thing up front here. This will get a little interesting because I've got to fit between my leading edge and further back, plus some of this is curved. And again, our only goal here is to just keep from sanding into the, um, the ribs themselves. So the rest of it's okay. We want to hit that webbing um, and get it down to the correct thickness. Same thing, I'm putting another layer here so that I can um, sand my leading edge down. Oh, and we need a piece of tape right here. Now 
Now at this time, another thing that I recommend doing, well, if you're going to have to do it, it's not recommending, it's you have to, is these pins that you have set as a stopper on the leading edge, you're going to have to sink those down pretty much level, uh, just above the level of the lower wing skins. And the reason for that is we're going to take this trailing edge down um, fairly thin back here. I'm going to take that uh, T10 out of the end for now. And so that has things pretty well laid out. So for the trailing edge, you can sand on that, but I recommend using a razor plane. And again, we're going to have the tape kind of guiding us as far as how far to go down. And so I'm just going to plane this down until I start seeing evidence of it bumping the tape. And now I'm hitting into, oh, that pin that I'm getting into. Great way to dull a nice blade. this area I've already reached the desired uh, cutting up now here except for at the very tip where we need to be as well And so now, come in and go ahead and sand things nice and smooth. And there we go. Now that we have our trailing edge finished, let's attack each of these uh, shear webs. And so the way that we're going to hit those, you can, since they are uh, vertical grain, you cannot plane them, so you will have to use the sanding block. Check regularly to make sure that you're cutting evenly here, sanding evenly, I should say. can approach the main shear web.
Now if like me you've left an area that's um, not shielded, make sure you don't sand over that because it's very easy to get back here and cut into that as I did on this rib right here. Now we have finished sanding the web all the way out here to the tip. have maintained just going down to the depth of the ribs on all of that. So now we need to work on the leading edge. Now I have gone ahead and started raising these straight pins back up that are at our trailing edge. Um, that gives you something to hold this wing against and we're going to use it um, again we're going to use those uh, for alignment purposes here again fairly soon. Um, I'm going to hold off putting that one in the tip. I'm going to put this in. Those will come back out in a minute. Um, at this time, let's hit our leading edge. So the leading edge, you want to start out using your uh, razor plane. At this time, I would also go ahead and loosely cut that wingtip to size uh, just so that things don't get in the way out there. Same thing here. doesn't have to be accurate by any means, um, meaning cut over, not under. And there we go. And now I'll take your razor plane. shaping this leading edge. I want to try to follow as closely as possible the slope of the ribs from there at the front. Initially, we're just going to that slope of the ribs at the front. We're not trying to um, round off the leading edge yet. We are actually down to correct depth. You'll see as you do this that you start taking little bits out of the um, masking tape, and that's how you know when you have reached the correct depth. So what you do is you just start working your starting point uh, further and further out. Now at this point, we can come back and we can start 
shaping this down a little further. Alright, we have finished shaping the leading edge here uh, with the razor plane, so now let's take a sanding block and lightly sand over all of this. that the wing is lo loosely shaped we've not curved this down to a point or anything there's still a flat all the way around here that'll be taken care of later at this point go ahead and remove all of your masking and then um, that pin and that pin have to come out um, we can actually replace them out here at the ends And now remove all your masking and then we'll come back. Now take a bottle of glue that has enough glue to get this done because what we're going to do is we're now going to close up this wing. So take one of your top skins, go ahead and to familiarize yourself, set it in place, feel how it's going to go down on this, on this surface. Now, there are other methods to skin this wing than the one that I have told you. I'm going to show you, sorry. Um, Tran has a method that works. Uh, it also takes a while, and I lack patience. So I'm going to use this method because I've used this method on six of these airplanes now, and it has worked magnificently on all six of them, so I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. There is a catch to this method. You get one chance. One chance. Do not use like Bob Smith glue or something like that that's going to bite on you uh, before you are ready to join this wing. You need to have a glue that you can trust to give you a little bit of working time. I thought that was masking tape on there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put glue on our ribs and on our trailing edge and then we're going to come back onto the shear webs and here's why. The shear webs are vertical grains so the glue wants to soak into them which means as soon as it hits them it's going to want to try to harden up. So we want to deal with it last. And I'm and you will notice I am only putting glue up to the point of the shear web. I am not putting glue past the shear web. We will close the front of the wing up afterwards. Okay, now that I have the glue on here, 
I want to line this trailing edge up by the root. Out here at the tip, so I want adhesion all the way along here. And I'm going to start pressing down up here. Now, if you have a spray CA accelerator, it would be really nice at this point. I don't. our way all the way out here. Now that we have hit this all with accelerator, we can actually lift this up off the board. You can see everything is attached correctly. If there are any parts here that are loose, you might want to go back and glue them at this time. However, in my case, I got it all right on the first time. Looks good. Now, one thing you'll notice, I can still twist this wing quite a bit. That's going to change once I hit this with glue. Now, here's the catch. Because of that, that means I'm going to have to work this in segments, taking it on and off of the board as I do that. Reason being, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run glue in here, press it, and I'm not going to press it down. I'm going to run glue in here at my rib intervals and a portion of my leading edge and then I'm going to lay this back down on the board, close up that area and work my way along. And that way I don't get a twisty wing. So let's begin doing that. Each rib station, I dribble glue back in here. Excuse me, I gotta get this on camera for the photo manual. Notice I only went part of the way out here. So now, what I have to do is set this back down in its bed. My stock was right there. I'm going to close. 
close that portion up. Consequence is you do get glue on your fingers and you do get stuck to the front of the airplane. So, things are not going to lay down perfectly there, that's okay. The main point is, if you notice, I can no longer twist this. So it's closed up correctly, we are, the wing is not twisted at all in this area, it lays down as it's supposed to, so we're good to go. So we repeat this process here. After that, all we have to do is close up our wing tip. If I can get enough glue. Now, 
You want to close this wing tip up. Um, well, this is my outside wing tip, so this is not the one I throw by. Uh, but regardless, um, for the wing tip that you're clo that you're going to put a throwing blade on, if you put a throwing blade, assuming you're building the DLG version, not one, not the electric or something like that. Um, you do want to bear in mind that you're going to cut that section back open. So you want it to be good enough to get the airplane sanded and covered and lighted or however all that's going to be. But bear in mind on, um, on my left wing tip, since I'm right handed, um, I'm going to cut it back open and fill it full of epoxy. That's only for this part out here. All right, with that, structurally, our right wing is complete. And now, if you notice, I can twist this a little bit. Um, like, I can twist this the, the amount that I can twist a composite DLG. It's stiff. It's, it's like it's supposed to be. And there you go. Of cake. So the hardest parts of this build are now, um, well you're going to have to repeat it on your other wing, um, but for this, for that particular wing, you have passed all of the difficult hurdles, now all you're going to have to do is sand your leading edge. Um, well you'll, uh, I recommend planing it and then sanding it, um, and then go from there. But the bottom line is that, um, Leading edge is uh, the only remaining thing here. So structurally, it's complete. We now have both of our wings closed up and ready for the next step, which is my personal least favorite part, because this step involves us going in here and shaping the leading edge. So um, this is really nice fancy razor plane. It likes to dig in because it's not designed to plane into plywood. So I'm going to go get a cheap plane that actually is much better suited to this. So I'll show you that in a minute. This is a Stanley mini plane. Um, cheap uh, instrument, but you can do a lot with it. Um, has a very heavy duty blade, so it can dig into this plywood much more consistently. And so our goal is to feather the plywood into the balsa leading edge. And so we'll have a nice, pretty round leading edge. In my case, I've got some CA that bubbled out here on the tip, and that's real fun to deal with, but you just have to work your way through it. Turn back to the upper surface here.
we go. So you can see we're roughly shaped here. And now that you've done that, you want to come in with your sandpaper and sand this room. And this part will take a while and your hands will get tired. Oh, hi Caleb. I love you, Taylor. Hey. Now that we have sanded out the leading edges so they look very nice, we're going to sand the dihedral in the root of the wing. So one approach for that is um, to use a sanding gauge like this. So six degrees uh, roughly in here because it's about six degrees dihedral in this airplane. Um, I actually, uh, on some of my previous ones, used a miter saw so I would block the, uh, the wing up the, the necessary amount um, and then using a miter saw was able to carefully calibrate front and back and able to just whack off just enough there. Uh, a little bit risky but if you uh, are comfortable using that technique um, it works out very very well and it's fast so you can get it all done in an instant you know, once you're done jigging things up. Uh, this method, you have to be careful that you don't round off things so that you end up doing this type of deal. And it does take quite a while. So start in the middle and then as you start working in, you can extend your stroke to uh, deal with the rest. Do not press this wing down too hard because the wing actually is under cambered slightly, so if you press it down, you'll bend this rear section back here. You can track your progress down. I'm only about a third of the way down here, so you've got quite a ways to go. Other thing to mention is before we get too far along, I'm actually going to have to jack this wing up slightly because most of these uh, types of sanding blocks, the sandpaper doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, and that is by design, um, but you do, do have to be mindful of that. Getting 
more slowly. Now's the point where we're going to take this. We're actually going to slide it into the uh, wing jig here. And this just gives us an elevated surface so we can continue with that. come back once this. At this point we want to go ahead and get started with joining our wings because we now have the dihedral angle set, um, set correctly. So start by breaking loose the wing joiner. We want to sand this off nice and clean. Corners off here. And if you've already cut your slot, this may in fact fit right in as it does on my wing. So we can actually do a. Ah! Fits on one. This is the one that we closed up beforehand. The one I did off camera, I forgot uh, to cut this slot until afterwards. But it does in fact fit. point you'll want to verify alignment. Um, my wing, this wing's wanting to sit a little lower than this wing, which means that this slot has some junk in the top of it that I will need to use a knife to clean out so that we can get an accurate fit.
this one. I need to clean out the bottom a little bit. So at this point, we're going to want to take this wing joiner. We are going to want to secure this wing very strongly. So that whole slot, um, and you may wish to use epoxy rather than glue, or CA glue, I should say. But regardless of what you choose to use, let it soak in there. up your excess. Now, if you're building per, <coughs> per trans uh, instructions, do not use CA. You, you really do need to use epoxy. Um, because trans instructions hinge on his fiberglass joiner being a very, pretty much the linchpin of the entire wing. Um, my configuration does not uh, use that method, so it's a little more forgiving. Um, but you still need to be mindful of that. With that, your wing is joined. You may want to clean up this uh, area if there's um, if the airfoils don't match exactly there. And in my case, they don't.
and there we go wing is joined now uh, depending on application and whatnot um, like if you're doing the electric version this probably is strong enough um, that being said I am going to fiberglass this wing joint I recommend you fiberglass the wing joint um, most of you are probably building this as the uh, discus launch version and in that case you absolutely must fiberglass this wing joint um, Trayan's method uses a fiberglass wing joiner that's stronger than the plywood one um, and so he does not have that issue to deal with uh, but in your case if you are um, building this with from my kit with plywood joiner you need to go ahead and fiberglass this joint Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.